What's up everybody, it's AJ here, doing another shakedown into the season. And this is our Backcountry XRS 850. <clears throat> Didn't get as many miles on this sled as we did for our 600 or some of the other skidoos, but we did get a few on it. Um, it's got just under 600 kilometers, so not a ton, but we didn't um, we didn't have the, the snow until a lot later in the season. And then later in the season, we were out, um, you know, riding in the mountains and filming stuff for next year. So <clears throat> didn't get a ton of miles on it, but the 600K that we did put on, this sled worked really good. Um, motor's great, 850, can't really complain about it. Um, nobody's gonna listen to you if you do, because it works good. Uh, belt reliability was good for the 600, mile, or 600 kilometers that we put on it, obviously it should be for that much. Um, it's an XRS, so it's got the kick our shocks on it. I love those. If you guys watch my 600 um, XRS uh, MXZ water uh, shakedown, you'll see that I talk about the RAS3 on the front end of that sled. Same thing on this. When you put these KYBs, uh, I think they're, I think these are the C36s, right? When you put these ones on, they work good. And the front end of the sled works the way it should. When you put on a lower grade shock, this, the, you know, monotube, um, you know, non-adjustable, uh, just the aluminum rebuildables, I, I find that the front end of the sled can start to do a little bit of wandering when you get really pushing it through the bumps. Um, but all in all, uh, the XRS packages work great up front with the RAS3. Um, again, motor, no reliability issues. Didn't have to go back to the dealership for anything. Um, had no issues. Uh, carbides, stock, no problems with those. No chipping or issues with the uh, uh, with the skis, you know. Sometimes you can hit stuff and it peels the ski back. Track is in great shape, but with that many kilometers, it should be. Uh, the rails, something that we have had issues in the past with on certain, certain sleds. Uh, we don't have a lot of uh, a lot of marking or chipping or paint coming off anywhere. The, the paint on the spindles is really good, and this sled has been side hilled quite a bit and you know pulled down into the snow. Working great. Body panels. Yeah, there's a little bit of scuffing and stuff like that, but I mean, it's backcountry. There should be. If there isn't. You weren't using it. Um, overall cleanliness and whatnot on the sled is good. The color does show a little bit of dirt, but it's not awful. Um, like any other sled nowadays, you get that that um you know boot rubber showing up in places uh you get the you know a little bit of oil bleed this sled has not been uh, polished or cleaned in the 500k that we put on it and it's not bad for the the two two stroke uh kind of you know exhaust uh markings not bad at all i like the black piece on the bottom of the belly pan that to me is key to keep uh, keep your two-stroke sled looking good and not have to clean it all the time. Um, Tunnel-wise, not any markings at all on there. Hey, look, number 28. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, graphics stayed on pretty good. A little bit of peeling back here, but nothing out of the ordinary. Um, seat was super solid. Everything worked really good on this sled. It's it's been a been a really solid one. Um, I put a bunch of miles on this thing. Uh, another fella uh, who shoots for us put a bunch of miles on it, and we've both been really impressed. The test ride for next season, the sled's pretty much the same. I mean, let's be honest, it's not it's not changed much for next year. But uh, for this season, if you find one of these used, I don't don't hesitate. Great sled, works good. There are no real issues with them. Um, there's nothing that stands out, nothing in my mind that I can tell you that is a big drawback to say, hey, run. Um, I'll give you a a show of the, uh, the mileage on it just so we can verify that we're in the in the right neighborhood Let's see if the shot will work yeah i guess that's one thing that we did have an issue with so it's it says shot but i don't actually think this has shot on it um maybe, maybe it does it just hasn't worked for us this season so we, we weren't really sure about that we thought maybe we got the graphic and it just didn't work but it never seems to work on it so i guess that's one of our complaints stuff down and uh, we had it on a piece of paper back there but I didn't put it on so maybe, <laughs> maybe we got that mixed up so there's way more mileage on this one okay 1600k is not bad that's uh I mean truthfully we we all figure that anywhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred miles per season is an average season for most people I think that's fair to say um not saying that's everybody but if you took the 
you know the highs and lows of everyone he rides every year i think that's probably somewhere in the ballpark and uh 1600 kilometers is is roughly a thousand miles so um i think this sled shows well for its uh you know one season under its belt again if you find one of these maybe just look over the shot make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do this one doesn't seem to be working but um you know maybe it maybe it wasn't ever installed i don't know uh there this seems to be the only one that we did have an issue with uh that we've ever had so everything else seems to be good uh, economies and mileage exceptional on this thing gets good fuel mileage even though it's got that bigger track on it um it gets great oil efficiency it's a skidoo it's an e-tech it just pretty much sips that stuff you know you wonder sometimes if it's even using any at all um yeah belt life is is good same original stock belt so i'm a liar at that 500k that we were talking about this thing's got 1600k and no issues whatsoever uh with the belt so um yeah i think that's pretty good i mean sure you want to say that you get uh you know you want to say that you get two or three thousand like the 600 um that i did earlier the 600r but uh with an 850 i, I wouldn't expect to get as many miles out of a belt as uh, 600 but I don't know. I think if you get a full season's use out of a belt, put it as a spare next year and buy a new one. It's not really a huge, uh, huge expense. Um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with thinking that you're going to have to put a belt on these things every once in a while. Uh, Carbide Life has been good on these. It's still the originals uh, with 1600K on them. No issues there. Uh, yeah. Don't know what else to tell you guys. This thing's been been rock solid. Um, I was surprised because I was like, man, I feel like I put 500 kilometers on this thing, and I, <laughs> I probably did. So, yeah, the. Uh, it's been split up a bunch amongst a bunch of us and um yeah we put some miles on it rode it hard rear skid works good c motion is a good skid um again i'm gonna i'm gonna be brutally honest with everyone um our motion in my opinion for 2018 2019 season this year was the best in the business on trail sleds mxz's and and you know uh renegades uh c motion i don't think is the best crossover skid uh, I think the Switchback Assault has the best crossover skid. This one is not bad. It works pretty good. It's got, you know, really good shocks under there. Everything's got adjustment. You can play around and mess around with the stuff. It works good. I just don't think it's quite as good as the, uh, the Switchback Assault. Now, another cool thing on this one, 1600K of, you know, some aggressive off-trail riding and some gnarly stuff. We still got all those, all those studs, so this is a nice ripper. Um, do we have much in the way of chunking on this track? Doesn't look like doesn't look like the track track chunked anywhere. Um, yeah, it's in it's actually in really good shape. You know, a little bit of fraze on the side. Obviously, that happens. Um, take your blowtorch and clean those up at the end of the season, and it looks way better. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with this overall. I know you guys know that we like the Switchback Assault in these categories, and here's my opinion of the Backcountry XRS in comparison to Switchback Assault. If you're gonna run off-trail 70% of the time, on-trail 30% of the time, buy this sled. If you're gonna run on-trail anywhere between 50% of the time and 70% of the time, and off-trail between 30 and 50, so, you know, I, I think that, that then buy the, the Switchback Assault. I think the Switchback Assault is the true 50-50. I think this sled, is maybe 70 30 is being a little bit too far um you know biased to off trail but it's definitely 60 40 or you know I, i'd say 60 40 would be the best that i would give it um because it does work like a beast off trail it's great off trail when you get in the powder this thing will go places you didn't expect it to it does stuff that it shouldn't do um for the the track length and lug height uh but on trail it doesn't have as good a handling and and manners as the switchback assault does so um I think that puts it in its own kind of, not unique category, but I think it has its place. Whereas if you want to ride off trail a little bit more <clears throat> and you're a little bit more of a, you know, free rider, boondocker, um, flatland powder player, then this is the sled that's going to work for you, I think, a little bit more. And it kind of, I don't really know where the free ride fits in there because they make the free ride with the, the 36, which is an odd one. Um, and then the 46 as well with a deeper lug. I guess that's more for the mountain guy, but the 36 is an odd one. This sled to me, I think with just a little bit less in the rail. No, maybe it's not even in the rail. Maybe it's just the it's maybe it's the front end that just doesn't doesn't do as good as the switchback assault. It's it's got a little bit of little bit of here and there, but um motor-wise great motor uh and do I think the Polaris 850 is a little stronger? Maybe just a little bit, yeah. 
um, but nothing that I would I would get too too uptight about or too worried about and like I said if you're riding off trail a little bit more than you are on trail this is the sled for you this thing is an absolute beast off trail you will be just tickled silly with it um, and I, I would I would definitely not hesitate to buy one used definitely um, no issue with that or snow check one or spring check one for next year which we're probably past that now but um you know there'll be some dealers with some of them in uh, in stock next season so um yeah I, there's nothing that i have to say that's too terribly negative about this sled um i like it it does what it's supposed to do it's a good sled it looks good it looks great on snow the black and and red is uh, is pretty mint I, I guess the the lava red and white on the the new summit x and the um, or Summit Expert, sorry, and um, some of the other sleds next season. Actually, the Backcountry XRS has the, the red and white next season. It, it might be just the slightest bit better looking, but it's probably going to get dirtier quicker. So um, I don't think this thing looks too outdated at all after a full season. It's definitely a good looking snowmobile, and uh, it's, a, it's a solid buy if you're looking to pick one up used. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, thanks for tuning in and watching our stuff. We'll see you next season. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.